she thinks it's all encompassing of the identity of this team. She, she Thank you very much. Invest, invest in others, but also be invested in their future careers off the court. She stressed how important it was for her to build a solid foundation this year as he leads her team for the first time. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Amanda, as Omaria Gordon draws the foul, driving down low for the Seminoles. That was South Alabama with the opening tip. Meadow Overstreet, John Capolino, and Algenese Carr make up our officiating crew here today. Big rebound for KK Timpson, but as she gathered the basketball, she took an extra step. That's a traveling violation against the junior. Yeah, look for KK Timpson to have a big impact here today. She had 13 points and 12 rebounds in Florida State's win on Friday night. Jordan Rozier, the Tallahassee native and point guard for the Jaguars, brings it up into the half court for South Alabama. Kelsey Thompson, who we talked about, puts up the shot. That's an offensive rebound for Zena Elias. And it gets knocked out of play. It'll remain, though, with the Jags. There's Yalisha Jackson, the head coach for South Alabama. Spent seven years prior as an assistant coach and then had a three-year stint at South Florida between being an assistant coach in Mobile and taking over as the head coach. Our team is off to a hot start as well, a 3-0 start for the Jaguars. Out comes Florida State with the basketball. Nobody on the board as of yet. Omaria Gordon, though, driving down to the low post. Up and off the glass, KK Timpson with a steal. Timpson there in transition, just keeping her head up. Coming up with the big steal for the Knowles. Lapson looking for some room with the right hand. Had it rejected, it goes out of play and to the Jaguars. It's an interesting matchup to watch as you've got the uh, leading scorer on this Jaguar team, Kelsey Thompson, having to also defend the leading scorer of the Seminoles in Tanaya Latson. So here comes the starting five for South Alabama, headlined, as we've mentioned, by Kelsey Thompson and the Tallahassee native, Jordan Rozier. We're trying to get a shot for Rozier there, but instead, Zena Elias gonna get whistled for the moving screen. Elias and Kiana Anderson, a rather sizable front court for the Jaguars. Oh. Second effort, no good. Seminoles missing point blank range there. Tanaya Latson's not gonna miss that one very often. And then KK Timpson with the tip back, could get it to go. Rozier off the mark from the wing. Tell you what, Elias has been active on both ends of the floor so far for the Jaguars. That was a big offensive rebound, but then she just couldn't come up with it. I think a Seminole got a hand on it. They're gonna say it was last touch by Elias. Is that Elias a player that Coach Jackson mentioned is a big time leader on the floor for the Jaguars and is the CEO of the locker room. Omaria Gordon knocks down the opening jumper and records the first two points of the game though for the Knowles. Gordon in her junior season here off to a fantastic start, averaging 17 points a game for Florida State in this young season. Now goes to work guarding Jordan Rozier and back the other way Comes Alexis Tucker, one of a couple of transfers for the Seminoles. Wide open in the corner. Omaria Gordon has all of Florida State's five. Yeah, Gordon had a really big three in Florida State's win down in Gainesville that really keyed that Seminole run late in the game. She's off to a good start here with her own little 5-0 run. Couple of made baskets in a row for Omaria Gordon. That was knocked out of play by Tania Latson. It'll remain with the Jaguars. Imani Burke subbing in for Coach Jackson. We talked about uh, Omaria Gordon. You can see four at point seven assists for a game. She also has 14 assists on the season, just one turnover, impressive numbers for the junior point guard. Impressive rebound there for KK Timpson as she went up high 
was knocked down hard to the ground. And that's something too, Melissa, that Brooke Wyckoff mentioned before the game. She has really battled every point, every board has been hard earned this year for Timpson. Well, KK Timpson has had to go up against 6-6 six, six, uh, back to back games. I think she's probably very happy to be looking at uh, <laughs> Elias here today, who looks her eye to eye and is 6-3. And she got tangled up with Elias there. She'll be called for the foul. Yeah, just a little bit uh, elaborate on that. K.K. Timpson having to go against uh, Jillian Hollingshed, the 6'6 player. Also had to guard Rakia Jackson uh, of Tennessee in that game and then uh, was battling Rashea Kyle of the Florida Gators all game long on Friday night. Tough assignments for Timpson out of the gates and to her credit, double-double against the Gators. A huge showing for the junior on the road. Well, there is Thompson from the wing. You know you couldn't keep her quiet for long. Came in averaging nearly 17 a game, and there's her first three. Here's Gordon trying to get to the rim. Can't get all the way there, but can knock down the little pull-up jumper. Good shot from Aria Gordon. She's got all seven of Florida State's points. Four-point lead for Florida State as Jordan Rozier brings it back across into the half court for South Alabama. Sarah Bajetti given the assignment of guarding Kelsey Thompson there. Elias looking for some space. Big, strong offensive rebound. Leggett tried to put it back up, and it comes out with the Seminoles. It's going to be a foul there on Thompson. She's trying to slow down the momentum of Tania Latson. Latson so quick with the ball in her hands. She can get coast to coast faster than anybody that I've seen in a long time. There you see just the double arm check and the hold on Thompson, not wanting to get allow Latson to get to the rim. One of the many things that makes Tania Latson oh so special. And of course, we've already mentioned what she did in Gainesville. And Coach Wyckoff mentioned it was the most recent chapter in showing how elite she can be. Triple team on Timpson down low. Timpson got a good look, even with three Jaguars draped on her. Just couldn't get it to fall. Uh, Amaya Bonner that's going to be given the assignment. And Kelsey Thompson says, no problem, I got this one. Nice bank shot for her. So Thompson's got all five for South Alabama. Omaria Gordon has all seven for the Seminoles as Carla Viejas is off the mark. The three ball attempt. Three ball back the other way for South Alabama. And Alexis Tucker brings it back across for the Knowles who try to run the floor quickly. Simpson there trying to clean things up. And it goes out of play. That leads us to our first media timeout with the 12th ranked Seminoles leading South Alabama by two with the tuck. This place is special. It's not just the things you love. In Tallahassee, a two-point lead for the 12th-ranked Seminoles. Meanwhile, we'll take a look at the season to date for South Alabama, the entire coaching staff in year one. But the roster full of returning stars, 74% of their scoring back on the roster. And so far, they're 3-0. and Yeah, again, credit Alicia Jackson for being able to keep players in this era of the transfer portal. When a coaching change, ha change happens, you expect that a lot of players leave the program. You bring in a lot of new faces. And she was able to retain a lot of these uh, talented players for the Jaguars, which is going to allow them, I think, to have some early season success and kind of lessen that learning curve as they go along. So far, they've been able to hang with the Seminoles. Tania Latson called for the offensive foul, just the second foul against the Seminoles called here over the first five or so minutes of play. Kaya Simmons subbed in a few minutes ago for South Alabama. She brings it across. And now Thompson, who already has a three for her efforts, put that one up no good. Bonner running the floor with the right hand. That is off the mark. Sakaya White with the stick back attempt. Could not get it to go. So two of the fresher faces for the Seminoles. And there's a steal for Latson. Easy pickings for Tania Latson, who runs coast to coast. 
and has a couple in the scorer's column. What a smart play by Tania Latson. She knew she had the defender behind her, and instead of trying to just go straight to the rim and finish on the right side, she knew she had her on her backside, so she went to the left side, finished with that left hand. Just another uh, little thing, but something that elite athletes do. You love seeing that from Latson. Oh, what a pass, and Leggett lays it in. A nice play from South Alabama. That sticking around here, doing a nice job on the offensive end so far. Two-point game now, 9-7, Knowles. Bonner, spin move, knocked out and last touched by South Alabama. Yeah, that was, that was, that was the right call by you. Uh, the officials had to talk it over a little bit, but there you see Tanaya Latson coming left hand, left side, just like they teach them even when you're young. Mains with Florida State as it should. Ten left on the clock though for the Knowles. Seven, six, five. Latson on the drive called for another offensive foul. He's just calling those really tight today. That's a second or third illegal screen we've seen on both sides. They're gonna call Sakaya White for that. Now Latson calls up White, but White gets there, but then at the last minute sticks that hip out. It's a good piece of officiating. Can't do that hip check. They're going to call that every time. So they'll start offensively for both of these teams. Florida State for their part. One for their last seven. South Alabama is three for 13 from the floor in total. Corner three, though. That is strong. And Jetty fighting for the rebound. It comes out with Latson. Nice I feed down low. Wow, I don't know how she found K.K. Timpson on that. Timpson maybe was a little surprised too. She missed the first one, stuck with it though, and got the second one for the putback. Just wanted to pad those rebounding stats early to K.K. Timpson. Strange but effective. She gets the two points and she adds a rebound to her total. Seminole still just shooting 28% from the floor. South Alabama just 21%, so not exactly a shooting exhibition on either side so far. Ball will remain with South Alabama. Timpson got a hand in there and knocked it out of play. And so Nadia Howard will head right in front of Florida State's bench to send it in. Inside 10 left. It goes to Micaiah Simmons. Simmons to Thompson. Latson chases her off the perimeter and she took an extra step. That's a traveling violation. That spin moves one they've been watching for the last few years, not allowing players to take that extra step. And there you see a little dance move. Okay, Timpson nearly had a goaltend on that. Here's Florida State oh. back in the half court. And a foul down on the floor. That's big. If that's on Thompson, that's going to be her second. Again, we saw earlier that she had that block charge, a uh, block call on Tania Latson. That is on Thompson, so that's her second, and that's a big loss if she has to go to the bench. Indeed she will. They'll bring in Tyrell Williams in her place as Timpson goes to the line to shoot a couple. First one up and good. Florida State has been a good free throw shooting team early on this season. Seminoles on the season, you mentioned over 81% from the free throw line as Timpson knocks down a couple there for Florida State. And just like that, what had been a tight quarter, the Knowles have quickly established a six point lead, nearly doubling up the Jaguars and sending their arguably best player to the bench in foul trouble. Still two minutes left here in the quarter. Simmons short, and out comes Snoop Turnage. Jetty waiting on the wing, swings it to Bonner, in and out. Can't get Timpson battling there on the glass, trying to get around Anderson. Looked like she might have gotten hooked a little bit. Speaking of Anderson, trying to score over Timpson, no good. Here's Bonner. 
Bonner with the right hand gets it to go. Finish through the contact does the sophomore transfer, Amaya Bonner. No points in the last two and a half minutes for South Alabama. Florida State has scored six in the last minute and a half. Sarah Pacetti out there making it difficult on the wing. Inside the final minute, Williams dishes it to Amani Burks, and Burks splashes through the mid-range jumper to cut the lead to six. Nice looking jump shot from Amani Burks, the redshirt sophomore from Melbourne. Latson pull up short. Timpson, offensive rebound and stick back. Said Simpson could be a difference maker here today. Already with five rebounds, six points. We're just through one quarter. Speed toward what could be a second consecutive double double here after going 13 and 12 in Gainesville, did Timpson. Last 10 seconds of the quarter. Simmons off the mark. Here comes Latson racing up the floor. Out wide to Bonner. Three ball. Good a big time shot to finish off the quarter. Tania Latson this year is a very experienced squad when you talk about bringing back players like Timpson and Latson and Gordon Bajetti, all names that are very familiar, especially around the ACC. But Wyckoff doing a tremendous job, very much of a player's coach. She was a player here under Sue Semrau, has her jersey in the rafter, it's in the Hall of Fame as a student athlete, now trying to maybe do that as a coach as well. Added some nice pieces. Carla Viejas with the opening shot attempt for the Knowles. A sharpshooter back in her native Spain. Omaria Gordon's going to be called for the offensive foul. Something of note for Florida State. They finished quarter number one, making three of their final four shot attempts. It was a seven point flurry in the last minute and 10 seconds. Uh, again, Florida State has shown that they can score quickly and score in bunches when they get hot. So as we get quarter number two started, it's Tyrell Williams working on Sarah Bajetti with the bounce pass to, it looks like Nadia Howard who gets that to go. South Alabama with a pretty deep bench and we've seen Coach Jackson go pretty deep already here early on in this game. Howard with the first couple of points here in quarter number two, Tucker is going to be called for the travel. And Tucker indecisive there out on the perimeter, wasn't sure. Probably should have just pulled the trigger right away. She's a really good three-point shooter, shooting at almost 50% from beyond the three-point line. She just wasn't sure what she wanted to do with it, kind of outfought herself there. This is a Florida State team that can really shoot the ball. They come in on the season shooting over 40% from the perimeter, made 13 against Tennessee. Here's Simmons, used the screen to get around Bajetti. Turner skies for the rebound, but Omaria Gordon came away with it. Gordon was, had the ball and, and a mind to get all the way downhill and get to the rim, and uh, unfortunately just kicked it off of the foot of Elias there as she was trying to get up court. Going to your second quarter, Florida State still looking for those first points of quarter number two. Okay, Coach Jackson had a point there. I think Viegas traveled on that one when she caught it as well. But KK Timpson picking up the slack and knocks down another jumper. She leads the Knowles with eight points. And the Knowles have doubled up South Alabama. Simmons working on Viegas over on the wing. That was a nice pass, but it was swatted away. KK Timpson will have none of that. Howard thought she had an open lane to the rim, had gotten by all of the Seminole defenders, but KK Timpson right there to swat it away from behind. 111 career blocks, that's seventh all time at Florida State, and those numbers surely will continue to climb in impressive fashion over the course of her junior season. Simmons now dishing it to Anderson. Anderson spins, is rejected once again by guess who, Timpson. It will remain with South Alabama. Last touch by a Seminole. There's five seconds left on the shot clock. Another big block from Timpson. Comes over and helps side, swats that one away. And last touch there by Tucker. Couldn't quite come up with it. So two blocks in one possession for K.K. Timpson, and as you mentioned, South Alabama only has five seconds to work with here. It goes to Imani Burks. And 
Now to Simmons, pull up three from the wing. That is short and a shot clock violation by the Jaguars. Really solid defensive possession there. Two blocks from K.K. Timpson, and then the tough, tough contested three. Now here comes Florida State. Maria Gordon has the best assist to turnover ratio in the ACC, 14 to one to this point. She calls her own number there and was short on the three ball attempt, and she's been scoring the basketball, as you mentioned, Melissa, effectively as well. Elias tried to back down Tucker, no foul called. Shot doesn't go, and Florida State comes away with it anyway. Nice job by the 5'11", Tucker standing her ground there, having to guard a bigger post, and Sarah Bajetti there with the finish. Bajetti running the floor well, laying it in, and Florida State has stretched their lead to 13. Sarah Bajetti making the move with a strong finish over the outstretched arms of Zena Elias. We welcome you back to Tallahassee and to a young lady who has really been asserting herself over the last couple of years, especially. And when you take a look at what KK Timpson did last year. First in the ACC in field goal percentage, third in rebounding, 13 double doubles. That was second most in the conference. And then second in blocks per game. She was the ACC's most improved player last season. Yeah, and was selected this season in the preseason all ACC team. And you can see why she is going to be a force to be reckoned with come ACC play. She gets another block there. That is three blocks on two consecutive possessions. Fifth in D1 to this point this season in blocks per game at 3.3. So in two possessions, she has equaled <laughs> roughly that output. And she still has a half and six minutes and 48 additional um, ticks here on the clock. Thirteen point lead for Florida State. It'll be it looks like Tanaya Latson to yeah. send it in. I'm not sure what we're waiting on here. Maybe trying to get a clock. I believe the shot clock reset, and they did not maybe want that to reset as I don't think it hit the rim, so they're gonna try to go back here and take a look and make sure they get the right time. Uh, the way that the Seminoles play with pace and space, I highly doubt that the shot clock is going to be an issue on this possession, but the officials still need to get that right. And for South Alabama, who we saw come away with nothing there on that last possession, KK Timpson with the block, they'll reset the clock here to 24 seconds. We'll get back to South Alabama here in a second. The Jetty working down low, call off the shot attempt. Foul is on the floor. That has been an issue for South Alabama. Jordan Rozier, the Tallahassee native, will be called for the bump. Yeah, these Florida State Seminole guards so explosive on the perimeter. That court, quick first step, they're able to get to the rim. South Alabama having a little bit of a challenge, keeping them in front. Here's Tucker. Now Bajetti lines up a three, in and out. And a collision down in the paint. Looks like Tucker crashing in there, trying to corral the rebound. It will go yeah, it certainly to South was, Alabama. Uh, Alexis Tucker trying to get to the offensive glass there, but gave a little extra shove from behind. She's gonna have to go to the bench here. She's picking up that foul. Snoop Turner is gonna check back in for Florida State. Howard on the wing. Down to Jordan Rozier. Burks had it swatted away by Timpson. Howard gets it, and then Elias cleans up the miss and puts it back up. Elias, I think, gave a little extra forearm right into the chest of Snoop Turnage. Mentioned for South Alabama, Jordan Rozier, who is a Tallahassee native, a homecoming for her, who uh, Coach Jackson said she has no idea how many family and friends she's got in the house, but she ventures to imagine plenty. What an opportunity for her to come uh, back home. And I just heard a little boy right behind us say, come on, 24, which is Jordan Rozier. So clearly he's here to watch her, and I'm sure she's excited to be back in front of 
uh, a lot of her friends and family. Speaking of her family, it's a family of athletes. Older sister played uh, basketball at Prairie View A&M. Another older sister played softball here at FAMU. Uh, brother played quarterback uh, back in a few years ago for the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, it's, a, it's a very athletic family in Jordan Rozier, the, the youngest of the group and uh, stellar athlete herself. She's a gifted athlete and also the Student Athletic Advisory Committee president at South Alabama. So excels on the court and then of course in an administrative function trying to represent student athletes and giving them a voice on their campus out in Mobile, Alabama. So just tremendous in all facets for Jordan Rozier. That was a good looking attempt for Tyrell Williams. That's as wide open as you would want to be out there on the wing, but she airmails the basket. Yeah, but a good hustle play there by Imani Burks. KK Timpson trying to keep Burks off the glass, and Burks just hustles over, can't get the ball, but grabs it and bounces it right off of Timpson, and that'll stay with the Jaguars. 6-0 run for Florida State over the last 235. Meanwhile, the Jaguars have missed their last eight shot attempts. Here's Tyrell Williams. Inside 10 seconds, now it's Leggett. Leggett driving on Timpson, looking for some help. Burks inside three seconds. Down low, Howard with the left hand. That'll catch the rim. It won't be a shot clock violation, but Pajetti comes out with the rebound. And here come the Knowles. Moving quickly, Latson behind the screen, too strong. Timpson, another offensive rebound, looking for somebody else in white. Gets it out to Bajetti. And the Moles have roughly 10 seconds left themselves. Bajetti, nifty move, couldn't get it to go. And that's a big board for Burks. Williams back the other way. Tempo picking up both directions here for both the Knowles and the Jaguars. Rozier dishing it out to Leggett. Good look for Leggett, too strong. Burks crashing in, trying to put it up, and will earn a trip to the free throw line. Some good offense on both ends of the court. Neither team really able to convert. You mentioned the shooting drought to the Jaguars. Now 0 of their last 11 have not scored in the last four minutes and 30 seconds. But they are continuing to bow hard. They're getting really good looks. But you got to think that uh, that size and the presence inside of KK Timpson is bothering them, even when she's not blocking shots. Still, kind of in their minds of that that, that shot block here might be coming. And perhaps an added boost offensively for the Jaguars as they send Kelsey Thompson back out onto the floor for the first time since the first quarter when she picked up two early fouls and hasn't been on the floor since. And I think you've got to make that move if, if you're Coach Jackson right now. Give her a, a minute or two, maybe see if you can get a couple buckets out of her and then get her back out and try to protect her uh, if you need to. 447 left here in the half. A couple of free throws good for Burks. That puts an end to the scoring drought, but they still are without a field goal over the last four and a half minutes. Latson looking for some help out on the right wing. Keeping it herself now with the left hand, tried to lay it in. Sakaya White went up with it, and she'll earn a trip to the free throw line. That might be called a jump ball, but they are going to say that's a foul, and they're going to send Sakaya White to the free throw line. That foul going to be on Burks. That's now her second. So you look at Thompson with two and Burks with two. Elias also already on the bench with two. So Sakaya White makes the first of her free throws. She started her college career at the University of North Alabama, then went to Jones College, and she was the A-Sun Freshman of the Year back in 2021 with UNA, and then came out of JUCO as the consensus number one JUCO prospect in this most recent class. So we're getting our first look, really, first couple of looks at Sakaya White early on this season, but what a promising prospect she should be for Florida State. Yeah, known for her rebounding prowess, if I'm not mistaken, she led Juco in rebounding last season. 13.3 rebounds a game, averaged 18 points a game as well for Jones. Yeah, I was gonna say, she was a walking double-double in Juco for Jones College. There's an offensive foul against USA. Florida State will bring it back the other way here. If that foul is on Burks. That is going to be her third, so that's a big loss as the 6'2 sophomore 
been a bright spot for the Jaguars, now gonna have to go to the bench with those three personal fouls. She has three. Kelsey Thompson has two. Looked like the Jaguars were gonna come away with that. Somehow, SK White just came up with it. Got another possession for Florida State. No reset on the shot clock, however, just eight on the clock. Turnage, dribble drive off the perimeter into Sakaya White. White with the right hand puts it up too strong. And here come the Jaguars, Tyrell Williams. Williams, a player who's had a couple of ACL injuries over the course of her career, still trying to trust her body and the timing and all the all the things that come with rehabbing from an injury and feeling like yourself again is where she's at. Meanwhile, here's Amaya Bonner trying to go coast to coast, and she'll earn a trip to the free throw line. Good recognition there by Amaya Bonner. Just coming down the left-hand side. She had Latson on the right-hand side, and the defense kind of all paying attention to what Latson was gonna do over on the right, and Bonner just stayed with it on the left and took it right to the rim. Got herself to the free throw line. Bonner, a top 100 recruit out of high school, went to Cal Berkeley, averaged roughly six minutes a game over 21 games that she appeared in last year, and then showed up in a big way for the Knowles against Tennessee, had 11 fourth quarter points against the Lady Balls in that back and forth affair in quarter number four between the then number 12 and number 18 teams in the country. Yeah, Bonner now with seven points here for the Seminoles. Just eight minutes of action in the first half. Florida State has hit 30 points. They lead it 30 to 13. They're a perfect eight for eight from the free throw line. Williams with the feed down low to Anderson. She had that knocked away by Sakaya White. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Sakaya White. The official right there underneath. Didn't see that, but the official over here on the side, I guess, had a better angle. Like maybe a little body contact, look clean up top. That's two fouls on Sakaya White. That'll bring in Avery Treadwell, the freshman from Knoxville. And it will send Kiana Anderson to the free throw line. Anderson, a graduate student from New Orleans, Louisiana. Three points for South Alabama have all come at the free throw line. Perhaps four as Anderson puts this one up and it misses. So three points here over the last six or so minutes for South Alabama. Every single one of them have come from the free throw line. Florida State's defense doing a good job of not allowing much, if virtually anything, from the floor for the Jaguars. Bonner to Gordon. They're gonna whistle Avery Treadwell on that moving screen. The freshman knew it. She was trying to help her teammate get open and just gave a little bit extra. She would have just held her ground. I don't think that the Jaguar player would have been able to get to Amaria Gordon. Trouble played a couple of minutes against Florida, five minutes against Charleston Southern, did not play against Tennessee. So a couple of big minutes for Avery Treadwell here, and Anderson splashes the jumper through. First field goal in seven minutes, roughly, for the Jaguars, and Bonner quickly comes back the other way and gets it to go. Bonner explosive with that first step, but then so relaxed with the finish at the rim, really smooth up top. Snoop Turnage stole that ball away and lost the handle, but as she lost the handle, it touched Makaya Simmons' leg. So Florida State maintains possession here on this near sideline right in front of us here at the scorer's table. Snoop Turnage with her eyes up. She was trying to get that to Amaya Bonner, who even had already said, hey, Gordon, sorry, I had you on that one, too. Knowles thought they were going to have a good look on a transition break. Like a little bit of zone here from the Jaguars. Bonner tried to get right into that zone and took an extra step to do so. 
seven turnovers already in the game for Florida State. That's one category that they have been tremendous in this season, a plus 11 turnover margin. So far, even up here at seven apiece. Foul on the floor, down in the low post. It's gonna be two quick fouls on Avery Treadwell. It's gonna force coach Brooke Wyckoff to bring KK Timpson back into the game. Post rotation, not quite as deep this year for the Seminoles. With Mariana Valenzuela out for the season with that torn ACL while she was representing her country of Mexico this summer. She would have been a key factor for Florida State in that post rotation to stretch four that can knock down the three. She certainly proved last year she could do that as you see her looking on from the Florida State bench. Tyrell Williams. Splits the free throws. Snoop Turnage brings the ball down for Florida State. And bringing it across is Sarah Bajetti. And it looks like that's another traveling violation. The Florida State just trying to do a little bit too much off the bounce. I know there was some contact there, and I think that's what Bajetti is asking about. But no need to take it in if there's two or three defenders already there. You've got uh, other options there on the offensive end. Two teams have combined two for the last 20. From the floor, Howard looking for some help, and that is gonna be over the back. Yeah, but again, now credit Sarah Bajetti on the defensive end. She had made it tough on Leggett, didn't have anywhere to go with the ball, had picked up her dribble, and then just threw it to a teammate who was cutting in a different direction. And Florida State forces the eighth turnover of the game. In the middle of the zone, Gordon kicks it out. Inside the final minute, good ball movement by Florida State, and that's the look they've been looking for, KK Timpson. That's a great way to break down the zone, is get the ball inside there, just below the free throw line, and Turnage turns quickly and finds Timpson underneath for the lay-in. I'd say it was easy, but I'm not sure it was. As it stands, Florida State has doubled up South Alabama here in the half. Simmons, no good. Got back her own miss. And then Tyrell Williams nearly lost the handle, had it stripped by Tania Latson, who's going to get called. Excuse me, I think that's Omaria Gordon who's going to get called for the foul. Gordon came from behind to swat that one away and must have gotten a piece of the arms of Tyrell Williams. A couple more free throws coming for Tyrio Williams, who just split a couple of free throws a few moments ago. Sophomore guard out of New Orleans, Louisiana. And the first one is good. Coming into the game on the season, Williams at 83% free throw shooter looks good on both of those for the Jaguars 15 point lead for Florida State who can hold for the final shot here of the first half the Knowles 100% from the free throw line South Alabama to their credit 75% as well Jenny dribbling it out now to six seconds left here of the half up top the Jetty for three got it as we start the second half. The Jaguars have a couple of players with three fouls. Thompson is one, Imani Burks is another. Here comes Florida State back the other way. Again, just six made field goals in the first half for South Alabama as a team. The majority of their work seemingly done at the free throw line. They, had, they were 75% from the free throw line, and so that was the story of the Jaguars' first half as they now Look to operate here in the half court. Here's Thompson. That is too strong. Amaria Gordon had the first handful of points in this game. First five, in fact, to be exact. And Thompson had a few of her own. And here's Tania Latson. You mentioned that she's had a relatively quiet night scoring. That is deep on the three ball attempt. 
shots and just now one of eight from the floor for Florida State. That one just a little bit out of rhythm. Brooke Wyckoff over on the sideline trying to tell her team to cut and get some better ball movement. There's a nice dish from Latson over to Tucker in the corner. I was gonna say, kind of like Ooh. that movement right there. And uh, that's exactly what they're looking for. Just didn't fall for Alexis Tucker. It's 0 for 3 so far today. Seminole shooting just 33%. Been some missed opportunities, as you mentioned, for Florida State. KK Timpson is going to be called for the bump for the Knowles. Okay, we're going to take a look here. Amanda has got a little bit of information for us on these blue uniform tops that the Seminoles have. Take it, Amanda. Thanks, John. Today, Florida State celebrates its heritage game, honoring the legacy of the Seminole Tribe and their support of Florida State University. For years, the men's basketball team has worn turquoise and seven jerseys in support, but this year, every sport will host their own heritage game, with players wearing turquoise to represent harmony and fellowship. I spoke to Coach Wyckoff about the importance of this game, and she told me how thankful she is to be at a place where the Seminole Tribe is supportive of the university and proud that the programs are able to represent them in this way. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Amanda. In fact, that turquoise color representing harmony, friendship, and fellowship for the Seminoles. And we'll take a break here in Tallahassee. What even is this? Don't touch my things, gross. Janice, when you bundle your home or renters with your auto, Progressive provides 24-7 protection for almost everything you own. But do you really need my weighted hoop? It's for my snatched waist. It's my dog chase lounger. Foot treadmill. That's my Tuesday chalice. Purse that says purse. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber. I can't live without oxygen. Solid gold coffee machine. Lake making kit. Really? Can Progressive cover that too? Yes, but... Hi, it's Janice. I'll take five. Is my voice on TV right now? Does it still count as ending the night with McDonald's? If you order it for breakfast the morning after? I'm ordering either way. Order McDelivery in the app. Are you having any fun? Let's go. Okay. What you getting out That's of living? Mine. Hey, Google. Who cares for Take a what selfie. you got if you're not having oh, any great. fun? Are you having any laugh? Oh, Are you getting hey, any laugh? If other people do, why can't you have a little fun? Guys, it's time to stop treating your groins like junk. Presenting the Intimate Pubic Hair Trimmer from Gillette. It's not junk, so treat it right with a gentle and easy shave from America's number one trusted men's grooming brand. Respect your pubic region with Gillette Intimate. Black Friday deals in Saturday, only at Target. There are paths everywhere. Some are unexpected, some lead to greatness, and some lead you exactly where you were meant to be. For the dreamers and doers of North Carolina's hospitality industry, the path is paved with opportunities to learn, grow, and advance. North Carolina's hotels and restaurants want you. Find the path that fits you at servingcareers.com. Eighteen point lead for Florida State here at the Donald L. Tucker Center in Tallahassee, Florida. John Davison, Melissa Bruner, Amanda Golson on the call for you here this afternoon in Tallahassee. So we went to that last break. They were checking to see if there was any kind of contact to the head or neck area. I, I, we didn't get an official word, but it does not look like since there's sh any shooting opportunities that they saw anything else, but that was the reason for the stoppage of play. The foul had been called on KK Timpson. It was a common foul, and there she goes to work on offense 
Put back attempt number three is no good and out comes the Jaguars. Howard with the left hand no good. And here comes Sarah Bajetti. Nefty move all the way to the basket. That is no good. My goodness. It's almost like there's a lid on both rims, Melissa. Florida State has started this quarter 0 of 7 from the floor, and they have gotten some great looks at point blank range. A couple of good looks from three as well, and neither team able to connect so far in the first two and a half minutes of play here in the third quarter. 37-19 at the half. That is where it remains. Howard tracks that ball down in the corner. Now working baseline on Sarah Bajetti. Here's Elias with the skip pass over to Anderson. Anderson is short on the three ball attempt. Latson brings it up the floor and the ball was knocked out of play. It should remain, I believe, with Florida State. That's good hands by the 6'1", Kiana Anderson. Trying to keep up with Speedy Tanaya Latson and just swats the ball away, uses those long arms to reach in. So Sarah Bajetti will send it in to Omaria Gordon. Gordon lost her footing on the drive down into the low post. Looks like there might have been a little bit of contact on that one. Gordon gets up. Play on. Still 37-19 here at the tuck. Foul call down low on Anderson. Anderson didn't like that call. Got to be careful, though. A little bit demonstrative there underneath. Second foul on Kiana Anderson. Good pass by Tanaya Latson, and KK Timpson comes away with the first field goal of the second half for either side. That's a good look inside for KK Timpson. Off the high ball screen, Latson finds her underneath for the putback. Gordon nearly came away with the steal there on Howard. Speaking of Howard, there she is working on Omaria Gordon inside 10 seconds. They drive it down the lane. Instead, it's Elias putting that shot up. And away comes Tanaya Latson with another rebound. 20 point lead for Florida State. Latson keeps it herself. Athletic move trying to get to the basket and pick, pick her way through traffic, but that is short. And you mentioned Tanaya Latson, nine rebounds already for her. Rogier splashes the jumper through. That's the first field goal for South Alabama. And here's Latson. Short on the three ball attempt. All still just one of 10 in the quarter. AK Timpson skying in for a rebound. It will go to Florida State. Delayed call there, heading to the Seminoles. That's going to be a jump ball. Let's take another look at the hometown native, Jordan Rozier. Knocks down the big shot for South Alabama. Rozier, a player that started training to run the point this year for South Alabama, had been a shooting guard prior, and so that was one of the things that Yalisha Jackson took a look at and is one of the things that has changed here for the Jaguars is seeing 24 in red running the point. Yeah, Rozier's always been a really smart basketball player, so I think the move to the point guard which should go well for her. Speaking of going well, KK Timpson scoring in the paint for the Knowles. Let's take another look here. Backs Elias down, it's, takes it up right at her. Goes to the line for the N1 opportunity. Foul on Elias, going to be her third. Thompson already on the bench with those four personal fouls. 14 points and counting for KK Timpson. Now make it 15 to go along with 11 rebounds. So consecutive double doubles now for KK Timpson, the junior for Florida State. Well, 
Elias in and out. And if that is what your 6-3 center is going to settle for, it's good news for Florida State defensively. On the other side, that three ball doesn't go. Another good look from the perimeter for Florida State. Bump on the baseline. So Jetty trying to get to the baseline and cut off the dribble penetration. I believe that was Simmons that was driving on the baseline, but Jetty just a little bit late getting over in front. Couldn't quite cut her off. Jetty will get whistled for her first personal foul. Just the second on the team this quarter. There's a steal for Snoop Turnage. Here comes Bonner with it out to Amaria Gordon. Gordon, pull up, count it. Been impressed this season with Amaria Gordon's mid-range game. She has shown that a lot this season. She's shown the ability to knock down the three, but that mid-range game has been fantastic for the junior from Bradenton. He's a player that Coach Wyckoff has mentioned has grown up and is now fully healthy. She's emblematic of the type of player that they recruited her to be. And so as she dishes it out to Carla Villegas, this is Omaria Gordon and what she can do on full display. And speaking of what you've recruited people to be, that's exactly what the Seminoles recruited Carla Villegas to be, is that three-point shooter from beyond the arc. Villegas making it rain in the Tucker Center. 47-21, we'll be back with more after this. It's the first time all 30 are all in to conquer a brand new bracket in the new NBA Cup. Who's going to be first to take it? It's in-season tournament time. It's NBA on ESPN time. Back here in Tallahassee, the Knolls leading it 47 to 21. An 8-0 run for FSU over the last minute and eight seconds, Morrison. Yeah, that 8-0 run led mostly by the play of Amaria Gordon forced the head coach for the Jaguars, Alicia Jackson, to call a timeout. Got the fans in the Tucker Center here excited for what they're seeing from this Seminole squad. So as the teams continue to discuss things in the huddle, what do you need to see from South Alabama to get themselves going here? Because it's still, the offense has been few and far between. Yeah, I, I think for them it, it started when they, they made a little bit of a run, when they got some stops on the defensive end, they were able to hold Florida State out of the paint, and that's what I'd love to see if I'm the coach of the Jaguars right now. I'd love to see your defense really pack it in the paint, make Florida State have to shoot that long ball. Florida State not shooting it extremely well today so far from beyond the three-point line, although the numbers say a little bit different, but uh, I would want to keep the Seminoles out of the paint, try to defend one-on-one -on -one a little better, keep those guards in front to the best of your ability, and then just make, have, make Florida State have to shoot contested jump shots outside the paint. That's hard to do. It's not, that's not an easy thing <laughs> yeah. by any stretch. Against the pace ask, and space. Right, ask ask the, the other uh, teams that the Florida State Seminoles have pay, played. But if that's uh, what you're trying to do, that's, that's what you're trying to do. And on the flip side for Florida State, what do you like out of what you've seen out of them here over this last run that's allowed them to really stretch things out? Well, again, some of it came, same thing, from the, their stops on the defensive end. They got a steal from Snoop Turnage. They got a quick rebound in an outlet. Um, so that's the way that Florida State, again, is, is going to be able to score is in transition. You said it. Space, pace and space. That's the way Florida State wants to play. They want to play quickly. And the one way to do that is to get stops on the defensive end, get steals on the defensive end, take those uh, turnovers and create transition scoring opportunities as the Seminoles have as of late. Jaguars still have yet to break the huddle. FSU set to go here on defense with the Jaguars bringing the cross. 26-point lead for the home standing and 12th-ranked Seminoles. Here's Micaiah Simmons with the bounce pass out to Tyrell Williams, and Williams knocks down the three. It's a good look for South Alabama again. Draw the defense over and then kick out to the shooter. Williams makes the Seminoles pay. 
On the other side, Bonner with the left hand rolls off the front iron. Simmons back the other way. Williams once again lines up another. This one's strong, though. Elias cleans it up on the other side for the Jaguars, and this is one of their better flurries here. That's a little 5-0 run just like that for the Jaguars. Mario Gordon nearly lost the dribble down on the baseline, kicks it out top to Tucker. Tucker out to Bonner. Bonner with the three ball. One California girl to the other. That's Alexis Tucker with the assist to Amaya Bonner. Tyrell Williams right into the middle of Florida State's defense, and here we go. We hadn't seen a whole lot of offense from South Alabama in general. Florida State's been going on spurts, and now they're both hot. Williams taking it upon herself. She's got eight points to lead this team, but Alexis Tucker right back. We're gonna turn this into a scoring exhibition here all of a sudden. Alexis Tucker knocking down a big three, her first of the game. First three points of the game as well. Florida State has made four of their last five from the floor. Alabama has made each of their last several shots as well. Here's another one. Sakaya White, though, crashes in on the miss. White in there to do what she does best, which is rebound the basketball. Her out on the wing, into White, through contact, got it, and one. Wow, look at that play from Sakaya White, finishing through the contact. Let's take another look at that. Good feed pass, takes it right into the double team, and then finishes. What a play from the Juco All-American, Sakaya White. He's a player that has played anywhere from five to 10 minutes in each of the first several games here off the bench for Florida State. Now four points here in this one. A few big boards as well for Sakaya White. She's already made a couple of free throws, now make it three. Five points, four rebounds for White in just six minutes of action so far. Again, she, she would have probably played a little more in that first half and picked up those two quick fouls. Tania Latz in there trying to defend Simmons. Swatted the ball away, but got a piece of the arm as well. Second personal foul called against Tania Latson to this point. Again, still the four points, but nine rebounds as well for Tania Latson. Here's Bajetti. That's a steal. Bajetti was nearly tripped up. She keeps it. And that's a nifty move all the way to the basket for Sarah Bajetti. Sarah Bajetti. Playing hard on the defensive end. Then gets the nice finish. Hangs in the air a little extra. To get that one that fall. It's another moving screen there, and that's gonna be on Xena Elias. We have seen a lot of moving screens here in this game, I feel. We certainly have. Let's take another look at Pajetti there. She just tracks down the loose ball. Watch her hang in the air here, just a little extra. Waits for the defense to blow by and then finishes Jibajetti. Seven points now in 20 minutes for the Knowles. That is just the fourth personal. I thought that was gonna be five on Zeno Elias, but that is four personals on Elias, Burks, and Thompson. So a lot of foul trouble over there for the Jaguars. You said Bajetti had seven, now she's got 10. And Florida State is on an 11-0 run over the last minute and 13 seconds. Got a 14 to two run as well, Sean, over the last minute 40. So, Knowles putting up points in a hurry here late in the third quarter. Burke sets the screen, now gets it back from Tyrell Williams. With Howard, step back three, top of the wow. key, got them all! That's an impressive shot there for Nadia Howard. And here come the Knowles right back. They made each of their last five. Nice kick to the wing. Bonner for three. That is strong. Simmons back the other way. Nearly lost the handle. Came to a jump stop, but hit the end line there. And so right there on the baseline, heels into that A in Florida State. And that'll be a turnover to the Knowles. 14 turnovers for the Jaguars here in the game, but 17 points off of those 
Jaguar turnovers for Florida State. Big reason why the Knolls lead big. Final minute here of quarter number three. Tucker from the corner. White cleaning things up on the glass and will earn another trip to the free throw line. Shot doesn't go, so she'll shoot a couple. SK White again battling in there on the glass. She's a little undersized in there, but she's not afraid to mix it up with the 6-3 Burks. And that's going to send Burks to the bench as that is five personal fouls for Amani Burks. And Melissa, you mentioned the foul trouble for South Alabama. And you also mentioned earlier the importance of keeping Florida State out of the paint. A lot of the players that are in foul trouble for South Alabama are your primary paint protectors, the players who have the most size, whether it's Elias, whether it's Burks, whether it's Anderson. You're absolutely right. Florida State, 22 of their 61 points coming in the paint so far in this game. Also gotten 10, now make it 11 points from the free throw line. A lot of those from those fouls of the Jaguar post players. So back the other way now come the Jaguars. Tyrell Williams is trying to cut into this 31 point edge for the Knowles. It's been a good finish to the third quarter for Florida State, but Jetty knocks it out of play. It should remain with South Alabama with just 11 left on the shot clock for the Jaguars. Jetty so impressive with her on the ball defense. Does such a nice job of moving those feet, keeping her body in front. She squared up to the defender each and every time. Jetty certainly could be a, a candidate for defensive player of the year. Always called the guard on uh, the best guard on the opposing team. And that's a big block by Bonner. Here comes Latson inside the final five seconds. Lays it in with the right hand through contact. And that'll be the way Florida State finishes off quarter number three. From NBA All-Star and current Phoenix Suns forward commended her on her performance on Instagram. I spoke to Tanaya about her reaction to his comment, and she was surely appreciative of the love from one of her idols, but this was not the first time he had shown his support. It was in 2022 when she first caught his attention as a McDonald's All-American, and he has continued to follow her career since. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Amanda, as the Knowles get back to work, and SK White has been the hot hand here for Florida State over the last quarter and change, Melissa. Eight points for Sakaya White, five rebounds for her. She has come up big for the Seminoles here in the second half, giving KK Timpson a well-deserved break over there on the Seminole bench. Tucker got a hand in there and knocked it out of play. It will remain with the Jaguars here a minute in to the fourth quarter. Deanna Anderson responsible for the opening bucket here of quarter number four, and then White responded with a jumper of her own. And you see them working on each other. Ooh, nice quick first step there from Simmons. Simmons gets it out to Leggett, and now here's Latson with good vision of the court. Bonner all alone lays it in on the other side. That was a nice long touchdown pass there to Amaya Bonner, who gets the finish. We'll get her teammate tonight, Latson, the assists. Four assists for Tanaya Latson to go along with six points and 10 rebounds, and that last one's worth another look. It certainly is. That's baseline to baseline. Amaya Bonner leaks out behind all of the defense and then lays it in. It's actually now the fifth assist of the game for Tanaya Latson. The score monitor was just a little late updating. You mentioned those 10 rebounds, just six points. But Latson showing she can impact the game in so many different ways. The ball got kicked from the baseline back out to Anderson, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Anderson just kind of had to toss it up there, knew the shot clock was winding down. So here comes Florida State, lead up to 35. A little bit of zone defense here from the Jaguars. If you want to break down the zone, shooting the ball from three at a high clip certainly can do so if you can make them. Tucker, though, could not make that one. And here comes Howard working inside on the Knowles. SK White with another board. It was a nifty move from Howard. Just couldn't finish, but then White there to clean up the glass again. Gordon calling her own number. 
Big offensive rebound, Tucker turns and hits. Alexis Tucker's come on strong here in the second half as well. Five points now, four rebounds, a couple of assists. Tucker began her career at Texas Tech, then transferred to Santa Barbara, now here with the Seminoles. And there's Bonner, as you mentioned, Melissa, her California counterpart, doing some work on the glass. Now, Maya Bonner with 12, kind of quiet points. We haven't called her name a lot, but she's getting things done in the scoring column for the Knowles. Tamaya Latson trying to feed White. White, why not? With the right hand. What an impressive second half for SK White. 10 points for SK White. Really nice pass again from Tanaya Latson. Now six assists. Might she get a double-double and not have it in points? Ten rebounds already, six assists, six points. Certainly maybe, possible. Maybe could get it, be on our way to a triple-double. We'll see. I was thinking that. I wasn't sure I wanted to say it, but I'll agree with you now that you put that Let's out. Let's put it out there. 8-0 run for the Knowles over the last 242. No points in the last roughly three minutes here for South Alabama. That's an 8-0 run again for the Florida State Seminoles. Williams working up top on Gordon. Inside 10 seconds, Thompson back on the floor working on Sarah Bajetti. Now draws the double, shoots it over both her and Timpson, and there on the weak side, Howard puts it right back up. KK Timpson will get credit for a block on that. She certainly looked like she might have touched that on the perimeter. Give the Jaguars some credit for staying with the play. Howard finishes it up with the offensive putback. As of yet, no block credited to KK Timpson. Keep an eye on that though for you as Florida State goes inside the zone. Omaria Gordon now brings it back out. The Agos had a three courtesy of an assist from Omaria Gordon. Had it into the corner, and then Tucker drove down to the baseline, in and out. Howard once again working down low, trying to find some space against Florida State. It's tough to come by. Here's a look out to what? Out to Omaria Gordon. The assist from Sarah Bajetti. Omaria Gordon knocking oh, down the big three. Gordon. She's got 14 points now. Second only to KK Timpson with 15. You got five Seminoles in double figures right now. Balance the, scoring for the Knolls so far tonight. And on the other side, Thompson looking to spark some sort of offense for South Alabama, who's now one of their last nine. The Jetty. And it looks like Florida State will be called for an offensive foul. Another moving screen. It was a dribble handoff there from Alexis Tucker. She was trying to help her teammate Carla Viegas get open for the three. And in the process, she ran over a Jaguar defender. 40 point lead for the Knowles. Elias, she's got four fouls, dishing it out to Tyrielle Williams. Williams has quietly had a really solid day here today in Tallahassee. Certainly has 11 points. Nifty pass from Sarah Bajetti. The wraparound bounce pass to KK Timpson. Back to Williams, you, you're absolutely correct. Jaguars leading score, 11 points, three of six from the floor, two of three from beyond the three-point line, has three assists as well as a couple of rebounds. I'll have to earn Williams a few more minutes and a nifty pass there inside to Elias. Not for a second about calling her own number, opted instead to pass it down low to Elias. It paid off with a couple of points for the Jags. Here's Florida State working some interior passing. Bonner could not get the roll though. A little bit of a no look pass from Snoop Turnage. Finding her teammate Bonner and Bonner just couldn't get the roll. The other way, here's Leggett. Howard nearly lost the dribble. And there's <laughs> another block for KK Timpson. Timpson will get credit for that one, no doubt about it. 
Big time play from the junior. Fourth block on the game for Timpson. The foul here against South Alabama. That should be the final for Elias. And she makes her way back to the bench. It looks like we've reached a media timeout here in the fourth quarter. 3.42 left to play. The Knowles lead 77-40. KK Timpson not only has shown her ability to score the basketball, leading the Knowles with 17 points, but she has been a rim protector. Not one, not two, but three, but four big block shots for KK Timpson today. Tania Latson, meanwhile, checking back in for the Knowles, faced with a lot of contact there. Couldn't get it or the follow to go from point blank range. So it's been a day where Latson hasn't scored the basketball the way she usually can so often has, but does have north of 10 rebounds, 11 now in total to go along with six assists. Mid-range jumper no good for Elias. And now here's Rozier. Final three minutes here of regulation in Tallahassee. Bonner with the kick, Latson with it in the corner. See Williams just following Tania Latson, making sure that she wasn't going to get anything in transition. Nice pass, turnage to the corner. Latson couldn't get the three ball to go. Tie up between Treadwell and Howard down on the baseline. Should remain with Florida State. Well, Florida State going a little deeper in their bench here, bringing in a couple of freshmen. Avery Treadwell checked into that game at that last timeout, as well as the freshman Lucia Navarro, six foot freshman from Valencia, Spain. Gonna finish out the game here for the Knowles. Navarro, one of a couple of Spaniards on Florida State's roster, freshman Spaniards at that. Nice outlet pass to Elias, and Elias lays it in in transition. A little bit too much for Avery Treadwell to handle. She was calling for the ball, but Latson with just a little too high. That'll be the 13th turnover of the game for Florida State. Eight points in the last 220 for the Seminoles, who are shooting roughly 40% from the floor, 31% from the perimeter to this point in the game. There's your up top on Navarro. Now working down low with the right hand. Howard cleans up the miss, puts it back up. Rozier gets an offensive rebound. Here's Tyrell Williams with it, swinging it back to Jordan Rozier. Mid-range doesn't go, and Navarro comes away with the basketball. The hometown product, Rozier, in there trying to do something special here in front of Tallahassee fans. Fortunately, just unable to connect on a couple of those good looks. Florida State going inside out. Now here's Latson driving on Elias. That is short. Here's Leggett running the floor. Leggett will go to the free throw line. Rachel Leggett, a player coming into this game, was 14 of 19 from the floor, shooting 74% before taking on the Knowles today. A player who didn't play organized basketball until she was in the 10th grade. Wow. That has been one of the more tough and athletic players that the Jaguars have had. And so this, in so many ways, just the beginning of an athletic venture for Leggett, who gets the roll on the first free throw attempt. And while we got a second, you mentioned momentum at the beginning of the show, Melissa. Momentum in general for Florida State. This football team, despite the injury to Jordan Travis, 11-0. Of course, this women's basketball team is going to go to 4-0 with wins over Tennessee and Florida. The volleyball team will play for an ACC championship on Saturday because they just completed a reverse sweep of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. The Seminoles tied with Pittsburgh atop the ACC, and the Knowles have the head-to-head -head over the Panthers, beating them in five sets in Tallahassee. So a good time to be an old as they now try to salt away a 30-plus point lead here over the Jaguars and women's hoops. Well, don't forget our uh, nationally ranked soccer team as well here on the women's side, going to compete in their Sweet 16, I believe, tonight here in Tallahassee. 
number one national seed will be taking on Texas and in fact our uh, play by play compatriot down the bench from Asari Masudi will be double dipping he's going to be heading over there and calling that one with our terrific Seminole Productions crew. 6-0 run here for South Alabama over the last 319. A real nice stretch, make it a 7-0 run for the Jaguars as they trim the Florida State lead down to 32. Inside now, the final minute of play. Omaria Gordon short on the baseline. Jay Navarro with a big offensive rebound. With the left hand, gets it to go. Lucia Navarro with the finish through the contact. First bucket of her Seminole career. Big time play from the Spaniard. A little bit off balance, but the lefty makes it count. And their Seminole teammates love it, including her Spanish teammate, Carla Villegas. And you might as well salt away your first bucket with the and one conversion. So three points for Navarro off the bench. And Florida State has hit the 80 mark in this game, again, inside the final minute. Rozier, Tallahassee native, dishing it out to Howard. Howard with the bounce pass inside to Williams. Nice pass by Williams back to Howard. It did everything but drop. It will remain with the Jags with three seconds left on their shot clock. Oh, excuse me, they're gonna call a foul there, so. I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like. Just gonna give them a reset on the shot clock. They're gonna say that did hit the rim okay. on the shot attempt, so they got another 20 seconds on the clock. So Jaguar team that while they may come up short today, I expect them to have some success come Sun Belt season. This is a talented squad for first year head coach Elisa Jackson. Play with a lot of energy and a lot of effort. And Florida State has countered that with a lot of both of their own. They'll win this one 80 to 45 over the Jags here at the Tucker Center to improve to 4-0. Again, a 